Hello, how are you doing guys? Uh, it's been ages since I don't upload a video at all. Uh, I've been quite... Uh, I've been working for a while. I've uh, been uh, discovering a bit myself, starting a new business. And that's why I've been a while without being able to upload any videos to YouTube. So, um, I know I'm not the most experienced, best user of texturing or 3D art worldwide, but I can defend myself and there are some people that are intrigued on how I uh, make my stuff, how I render them, how I texture them. So I would like to go into a series of videos where I explain uh, how to do one thing in one video instead of making seven videos on how to make a material in, in Substance Designer. I'll make just one, so you know I, I cover everything in one video from the start to, to, the, to the actual uh, publish in our station and in the social media of the artwork. So today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make PBR materials inside Substance Designer. So the step one is referencing. How do we go into referencing? I usually use Pinterest, Google, ArtStation, etc. What do you use for the referencing? The software I use is a free software called PureRef. Okay, so uh, it's very easy. You just load here, load images. We load all our references. There's uh, references for materials and the breakdown of them, so I can know what way I have to go. This is not like cheating. This is just knowing the right values of the material we are having for a reference. So I was like, okay, this concrete looks well sick. So I want to have the materials map. So this is a reference. So I know where do I have to go and what colors is using. Is this more reference that I can have for all the information I'm using? So uh, once I have clear all my references, uh, we go to Substance Designer to make our scene setup. Okay, so I just opened uh, an old project uh, from a month ago that I just made. So here uh, is the scene just opened. I didn't touch anything, all the settings. So this is how the material looks uh, for me. I mean, you can have it better organized, of course, because I just finished it and I didn't want to organize this a little bit because I, I, I was done, to be honest. The thing here is that, okay, we are not gonna start with this. We're gonna start with something much simpler. We're gonna start with setup. So, we hit new substance, and we're gonna go OK and say the new material, however you're gonna call it. This time, I'm gonna select PBR Metallic Roughness Graph Template. Why? Because this is the standard shader that we're gonna be using in our engines. So, once we put the width and height, I'm gonna go for 2K, OK? We can go 4K, but this time, just to show you, we can go a little bit quicker with 2K. And very important, guys, always, always, always 16 bits. Why 16 bits? What happens with 8 bits? That with your height map that gets, transla that gets translated to your normal map, it's going to get layered in different layers and it's not going to look smooth between the different heights. So what we're going to do is just check that we have it on 16 bits per channel. Now that we created it, this is the base. Uh, this is our base parameters. Okay, this is uh, the medium roughness, uh, medium color, just basic. Uh, so when we go to do the height, the information that we're seeing is much more clear. I'm gonna explain this to you. Is that the same if I put this here? Okay, this let's call this a height map. Okay, I'm gonna put this a little bevel. So it's not so sharp. So something, something really like this. Yeah, something basic. So imagine this is my height map. This is the 3D uh, image that I want to be pasting into my normal map and everything. So here I'm gonna put uh, a blend node, and this is gonna be my master blend node. This is how I call it. It is just to, I connect the full height information done to the foreground, okay, it's here. And this is gonna connect all my nodes here. So, okay, how we start? First thing we're gonna do is connect to the normal map. So we start seeing the relief, okay. I guess we, if we have it to one, it's okay because it's a very 
strong height map, just leave it 1.5. Okay, if not, if not, it's gonna be too strong. So uh, after we're gonna set up an amino occlusion map directly from the height. And I'm gonna set it very low to something about 0, 0, 0, 0.3. Yeah, something like that. And we're gonna put a blind mode. I'm just gonna put this a little bit more whitey. Yeah, like that. And blend this to in multiply mode. And connect. And we got the color. Okay. So now um, we can touch the roughness, the the metallic, everything. We are just gonna connect the height. These three, we're not gonna touch them. Why are we we're not gonna touch them? Because now we have to focus on the height. If you focus on the roughness, if you can focus on the albedo before making the height, your material is not gonna look good. It's not uh, like uh, opinion. It's just a fact. I mean. If your height isn't detailed, your normal isn't detailed, your albedo isn't detailed. So what you need to do is make the best height you can make, work on your height before you want to be working on your roughness and all the other maps. Just work and until you say, okay, I cannot improve this height anymore, like there's nothing more I think I can do uh, due to my skills and the time I've been using this, okay. That's the time that you want to switch to the next step because uh, if you don't have a detailed and a decent height map, your material you can tweak as many things as you want. It would you just won't look good. That's it. So, um, how do we make a good height? So the first thing that we're going to do is obviously the referencing. So imagine we have this. So we know we start from large to small. We're not gonna start in reverse. So the first thing I see is these shapes, the squares, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a tile. It's four, it's but just four by two, it's easy. Okay, and just adjust the, the edge uh, width and everything. And this should be fine. Um, I have already the material made here. So I'm just gonna show you. So it's quicker. So okay, um, I have here the the material, the full finished version of it. Okay, but I'm just gonna unplug the albedo, unplug the roughness and the metallic. Yeah, that's it. And I'm just gonna put a uniform um, gray standard color to the roughness. I'm gonna put. Um, none at all metallic values and a very gray like this one this color this is just temporary okay. we're gonna put the the plain high resolution one okay why we want to put this one because this is the most um, detailed plane that we can see in our mesh so what we're gonna do is go to materials default the one that we already have, go to tessellation and go to height and up the scale until it looks natural. Why I do want to say natural? Because uh, normally, uh, there is, I, I also did this, uh, we normally want to put the scale map way up. So it's like, oh, it's like more sculpty, it's like more realistic. But the one thing we've got to take in, in note is this. Is this stretching of the mesh of the plane. This looks weird when you look at it up from up close. So what we're going to do is lower the intensity to something like this. Why? Because now it doesn't look like a, it's a stretching. It looks like it's more like natural thing from far away, as you see here. Now you cannot tell the stretching at all this is impossible so what we're gonna do is a uh, realistic uh, value of height not too much not too less just something real okay so once we have uh, the right measure for the height uh, we want to keep the values of the height in real from black to white not like this because I've, I've done it but this is just gonna be a headache for you because if you range your height and say let's you put it here 
because you put the scale of the tessellation to 10 and it was too much scale so you down the, the height information so in, in the final render you have a right information of tessellation what happens is if the, is that if you export this modified version of your height map you're gonna have a less information of grayscale in your height map what's gonna cause is a less quality normal map and a less quality I mean occlusion and all the maps throughout so I'm gonna show you just how big change can this make just changing it into the normal map see just disappeared all the details we just made to the materials and people go like oh what happened to my material because you are sending a very low amount of information so always keep your always keep your heights in auto levels always use this note auto levels please it's gonna save your life so uh, making the height uh, as I told you uh, we're gonna start making some panels like here we start with a simple tile sampler make a bevel some tweaking and after we start uh, changing the slopes uh, how with a slope of grayscale this is one of my favorite favorite notes and very basic pearly noise just to make the edges pop okay now I do the same thing but with our more scale pearly noise with the same effect so we start to see some really cool uh, effects on the concrete so we start uh, giving it more detail with clouds same slow blur and after the finish touch with black and white spots and very very detailed and scaled uh, ranch map so we can have a very very small dots and here you see the tiny tiny difference that it makes it's tiny but it makes a difference because when you see our materials that have been made by Daniel Thiger, by Enrico Tamekan, by I don't know, so many people that are amazing artists. And the, the difference is that they apply a lot of attention to the micro details. Because the micro details, people think, oh no, you cannot tell them, it's a video game. Yes, you can tell them, of course. It's, was, it's the, the main difference that is gonna make a video game material uh, a realistic material that's the difference because obviously you can tell from video game materials and photo realistic materials there's a big big step from between those two that's where we're gonna go from hand made materials we can achieve that of course but we're gonna know that we are need to add micro details to our, to our scene so um, here is our base concrete and after I just added the dots how do I, uh, how did I do it? So very simple. I just um, went like this. Okay, these are only place. How do I make the main place? I had this too. There is like um, S detect here. So what I could do is this. This is like a small uh, loop. And what I did after it was repositioning them so they could be at the right spot. After I multiplied them, I made them in in the same positions as the tiles, and um, placed them together. So after, uh, what I did was uh, actually make this a little dirtier uh, with all this crunch, and after adding um, these dots, what these dots do is actually make all these imperfections. Okay very cheap made not high cost so as we go uh, we need to add the cement because we only had the panels I mean the the below was nothing to be honest so I just made uh, from this uh, fractal sum and from these clouds uh, histogram range this and histogram scan this and I made a mix of the two so you can see micro details on the big detail um, I put it as a as the as the cement. As you see, a little bit popping up from the be, from the behind. Uh, that's the height. Is that simple? To be honest, I mean, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, this height uh, wasn't that hard to make. I mean, 
is the styles and some uh, grungy images to make the damage of the wall and make it look naturally uh, damaged uh, through referencing and uh, through the mixing ground maps. I think the result came up very decent of the height and we're gonna go through other maps. So to start we're gonna add the, the roughness. How do we make the roughness? So I always make the roughness of the same type Okay, I um, mean, th is the the roughness that works better for me? So how do I start? I make an amino occlusion map, very very strong uh, ambient amino occlusion map because here, as you see, this one is very light. This one is for the albedo, but this one we want to get as maximum blacks and whites possible. Okay, not too much contrast, but. Uh, the decent one, okay? So we can see all the whites and all the blacks. So after we invert the the colors and take the whites uh, near to the blacks, okay? So we can have a relative, relative low reflective surface. So how uh, do we trick this? Uh, because also we can just have this and it will look fine, but uh, this information like it okay so the first thing we're gonna get is just add uh, dirt from uh, the rain from the humidity how we do this you just add this kind of uh, branch map that is like falling particles apart and uh, splatters all over around so this one is gonna work very well for this so if we just see what effect it has on the render Okay, so just go back. So you see nothing here. Connect this now. And uh, look at very, very big difference. Okay, we don't want to be the fact super, super shiny, just very subtle. In the subtle is the uh, excellence. If you put too much, it's too much. If you put too less, it's too less. It's just the right amount, I think. So now we're gonna add the, like the drops from the screws. Okay, so we just add this and we just get a nice drop uh, wet effect. But we also want to put this a little bit shiny, so let's do it. Okay, so we got it. This is our roughness map, okay, done perfectly. So after we want to do the metallic one, why the metallic is here, as you see. We have the screws on our metallic, so we just need to put this value inside the metallic part. And uh, boom, metallic. Metallic values added. Okay, we now have all the effects except for the color. Why do I recommend to leave the color for the end? Because here you can see what it does to light from no color in interactions. Why do I say this? Because it's much easier to see what's going on in your texture without any color. So I recommend you not rushing to make the video and wait to make the good maps that are gonna stand out really in the PBR engine. So, uh, how do we make the video, guys? So it's not that hard, really. I mean, obviously, uh, we we had to make some kind of uh, artistic part for the raindrops, for the drops of the screws. So we're just gonna start from the height map to our gradient map, like this, okay? This is the base. After we mix some colors with the grass map we just made, so even the roughness can kind of have a link with the albedo. So when you look at it, it's, it's like solid material. You cannot tell it's made from Substance Designer because all the maps are matching with each other. So we're gonna keep tweaking it as you see here, we just add the amino occlusion map from here. And later, we're gonna put our drops, okay, that we just made here. How do we make this ones? From this and this. That simple, yes. So, we start making this. Multiply it about four. Put it in the right places. 
tweak it so it does look like straight and it looks like natural so we just deformed it with a lot of slope blurs and grunge effects etc and add it to here and also add it to the roughness and just plug it into the base color okay now that we have our full uh, material now we're gonna export it and we can export it like this in bitmaps and just save it in TIFF or Charga okay this is your like the most uh, maximum uh, this is the most maximum quality but if you want it just for a quick test you can save it as a PNG it works anyway and also you can publish it as a SBSR file what this allows you is just to load the material from one single file that weights kilobytes and you can load it um, in Unreal, you can load it in, in Marmoset, you can load it in any kind of supported uh, Substance Engine. So, um, we, can, we can make a, st a smart material. Uh, how we can make a smart material? Well, just exposing the parameters from here expose and we got a new function but uh, today I don't want to make small materials we I just want to make a standard uh, done material how do we presentate our materials for our portfolios ready renders so I'll be using Marmoset toolback why Marmoset toolback because it's very easy to use these are very high quality renders in very quick short time to make okay so here is our material this is just our placement maps with a scale I'm just gonna put it to our natural uh, scale the normal map very important you have to flip the y-axis and don't use our GRB color space here in the roughness uh, select channel R if not it's not gonna work for you okay um, now here you see it's not working so always our channel and uh, I'll beat them up always put the uh, this because if not it's gonna make your material lighter in color so always check this one and just load the rest of the maps if you want to put the occlusion you can set it to the to the one you want but I'm not adding any occlusion as I already added it inside the albedo so how do we render our materials we just load a sphere from 3ds max or blender that you created and export it you didn't even need to create a UV map for it because it's already made um, so what you need to do is export it load a camera put some settings like if you want some data field like here like on the on the edges added up subtile uh, data field so what we're gonna do is go to render settings Go to resolution 2 over 1, high DPI, go for uh, transfer anti aliasing, check local refractions. We're not gonna check internal because we don't have any transparent materials. We're gonna go high resolution shades, enable the GI, but we cannot check it. It's not gonna make any difference when we are rendering one ball. It's gonna make a huge difference when we make scenes. Wow, the, the GI, it makes a huge difference when you're rendering inside Marmoset toolbar but here you cannot tell the difference and here we're gonna put the voxel resolution um, I didn't really touch this because here uh, this is going to make a difference uh, in the brightness of your GI and as we're not using GI we can leave this also uh, ambient occlusion we're not gonna check this why because this ambient occlusion is for contact on meshes and as we only have a sphere it's not gonna work so it doesn't make sense to use it how do we make this lighting with our preset it's one of the presets here and I just added a point light just click here I just go to the light up the brightness if I don't like what it is okay I just can help go here and rotate it very easy and same for here but I just want the material to be showing as much as highlights and shadows and uh, very cool shiny reflections as possible like here at the right you see here I can see see some really cool shiny reflections and here I can see really the depth 
of the object. So that's what I wanted. As you see here, I can see the shadow coming in, uh, all this gradient of light, and here this cool, very cool, shiny effect. So yeah, that's that's basically it. And you can uh, save this scene, load other materials. It's gonna load it, and it's gonna look cool. So, guys, uh, once you have this, go to settings and set your image to a minimum 2K resolution and a sampling of 100 times. Save it in a format that you want. We can save it in this high bit format, so it's a higher uh, quality, but it's gonna weigh too much. So if you wanted to t test it, just select. Uh, uh, JPJ, uh, that's what I select always and it works fine for me. Uh, I'll check the transparency as we're using the depth of field and it's gonna leave a very weird edge uh, transparency. So we just check this and uh, capture. Okay, so now that we have finished the the lighting and rendering of our, of our material, we're gonna go into post-processing. The post-processing is gonna be very, very simple. We go to Photoshop. Okay, so the first thing first is now we want to do the post-processing. We're gonna start with the curves. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually inside in the middle, double click and try to move it around the circle here. You see I'm moving around the circle from the middle. So what we're gonna do is find the right values where it pops up and the whites are not burning. So, and check it, check it, and we see that the image now is more bright, and the whites aren't that burned, okay, oops, you see, we can still see the same information, but it's just a little bit more bright, okay, always from the curve, because if not, uh, from the middle, because if you move from here, you're gonna screw it up a little bit, and yeah, we can just out from the curve. Also, what we can do is actually make uh, contrast higher. Why? Because as you see now, our shadows are much more bigger than before. Look at the difference. Much more in there. And I don't know, it just looks better for me. I mean, the colors are popping up more, uh, the material seems it's more there. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more subtle. Do something like this, yeah. We're done, basically, pretty much. And save it as a PNG, JPJ, whatever you want. And that should be it. Uh, so guys, uh, that was it. If you have any questions, any doubts, just leave it in the comments. Uh, whenever I can, I will check it and I will answer to you. I always answer all the comments I can. So guys, it was a pleasure making this tutorial after ages <laughs> without uh, uploading a video at all. Uh, but I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new. And uh, see you in the next one, guys.